Namaste and welcome everyone to this Google Colab 10 Python codes that will introduce you to Google Colab. What all things we will be covering here? We will see what is Colab, how to set up Google Colab notebook. We will see then the 10 programs, the simple, the first one program, the hello world program, getting used to the variables and the data types. Then we will see some simple basic maths operations, conditional if else statement. We will also see how to use the loops in Colab, how to have a user defined function, how to use Python lists, and then we will go to using NumPy, then some graphics ability like matplotlib, and then we will see how to download data from the URL. So stay on. There is a one mistake, one spell mistake I have made here. Let's see who points out that and writes it in the comment. So please see the video till the end and also make sure that you are practicing whatever you are seeing to master Google Colab. So what is Google Colab? We have extensively prepared a video prior to this. It's a free Jupyter notebook environment. It is on the Google Drive, Google Cloud. You no need to install any software. Just open the Google Chrome browser, type Google Colab and you are done. You start coding there. So setting up Colab is quite easy. So you just go to uh, the Google browser and just type there Google Colab and you are there right there with Google Colab. Okay. So extensive video is prepared on this last time. So please use that video. Now we come to the next point that is uh, writing our first code Namaste Bharat. Typically it is called as a hello world. Here you have the Honorable Prime Minister of Britain. Rishi Sunakji welcoming you Namaste Bharat program so let's come up here now so here I write print Namaste Bharat and I run this and I get the output Namaste Bharat okay so this is the first code Namaste Bharat now I add a code window here code cell and come to the next code here I don't have to because I have already uh, preloaded all this codes that is exactly being written there so now we come to the next one so after this the second is the second example is accessing variables and data types so let's create a variable and print a personalized message say you are asking somebody's name say name his name is krishna you ask his age his name is 18 and you want to say hey namaste krishna your age is this okay so here uh, name is the variable we are providing it in krishna age uh, is also a variable uh, is is 18 and we are writing this message now so here it is name is equal to Krishna age is equal to 18 and we are printing this message Namaste Krishna uh, I know you are 18 year old okay so this is the second program now next we come to some basic mathematical operations here we will uh, define two variables a and b and then try to find out the sum of them, difference, product, quotient of these two numbers. So this is just a very very basic uh, program just to know how the basic math operations work. So here a is equal to 5, b is equal to 3 and the exact code is being written here. I run this code so to run the cell you have to click here and then or so you get this here the sum is of 5 and 3 is 8. So this is a third code. After basic mathematical operations in Colab, now we come to the conditional statement. What is a conditional statement? Conditional statement means if the condition is true, you want to execute that particular block of the code. If the condition is satisfied, you execute that particular block. And if it is not satisfied, it goes to the next block. So we are asking age, somebody's age, and we are deciding based on the age whether somebody is an adult or the minor. If it is greater than or equal to 18 years, then he is uh, referred as adult else minor so we are here we are asking age so the program here age is equal to 12 of course he's a minor because the age is less than 18 and the program is if age is less than or equal to 18 then print you are an adult greater than 18 and else it is minor so the answer should be that he is you are a minor because age is 12 next we come to uh, the for loop now why we use the loops we use the loop to perform the repeated task. If we want to perform a task multiple times, we are using the loop. Uh, most used loop in Python is for loop. So we will see only one loop here, for. And it will print, say, Vande Mataram. 
for a fixed number of time. So here we want to print Vande Mataram for five number of times and we also want to print the loop index along with that. So here is the small program. We say for i, i is the loop index. In the range 5, I am printing this message Vande Mataram and then I am printing also the loop index. The loop index goes as 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Many times you will require to define a user defined function. What is a function? Function will allow you to organize a code into a block which you can use again and again later. You don't have to define that much chunk of a code. Just define it as a function and call the function. When you call the function and give a proper argument, we will be seeing all these things. Don't get uh, bogged down by the Python or you know this uh, programming jargon. So we are here we are defining a function swagatam and we are welcoming the function welcoming uh, somebody with their name. So here is the function. So we are defining def swagatam here and uh, uh, you know we define we ask for the name the argument here is the name and we print your welcome uh, Mr. So and so. So let's come to the collab now here. Here we have defined the function function swagatam print you are welcome and whatever name we are providing as the argument we will provide so in my class there are many students with the name yash so i am using this name here yash so we run this and it says you are welcome yash okay so this is how you define user defined function this is a very simple function where we have only one line of code here but functions can be as complex and very very useful that we will see when we progress in this class now next is we want to uh, work with the list. What is a list? List is to store the multiple items. Just like you know, you have uh, you have a sticky notes and you write and you know you make a list to do list. Here you see a lot of to do list. Similarly, you just store all these things. So here we are uh, listing the festivals and we are going to access the list using the uh, index there. Now remember, list index begins with zero. In Python, the indexing begins with zero. So the first number here, Diwali. Uh, is the zeroth index holy although it is coming second in the list it will be uh, indexed as one okay so the same code now here accessing the lists here so we are defining the festivals here Diwali, Holi, the Sera and want to, want to know the first festival in the list I type the list name and take the first festival that is zeroth index and then it is the first festival is Diwali <coughs> now because we are going to use Colab primarily for the numerical computation, what we require to do is that uh, we use some of the inbuilt libraries like NumPy, SciPy, Pandas, so on and so forth. So here uh, we will just see the NumPy. So NumPy is one of the most used library in computing and what we do first we import NumPy and you know because the NumPy is a huge name so you can alias it, you can give a short name to it. Uh, you say np so import numpy as np and we are st storing a array of prime numbers here so prime number array is being stored and array is being printed so the same code now here you will see import numpy as mp np and then the array function we are going to use so instead of saying numpy dot array now what we will say we will say that this is a particularly np dot array because it is the alias for numpy np is and then we store our array here look at the format how we store and then we print uh, the prime number array is and then we call for the prime number okay so this array is being printed here now many times after this what is required is the plotting capability so plotting is for visualization how to create various plots and graphs and python it is extremely easy uh, in fact matlab has a terrific capability of plots entire matlab plots are librarized using a library called as matplotlib all those functions are available so again what we do is uh, let's see how you plot so here we want to plot these two variables say x and y so first we import that library import matplotlib.pyplot as plt so we will be seeing this in detail when we see the you know the python tutorials so currently we are just learning colab we want to jump into the numerical computation so I give the x-axis data, I give the y-axis data and then plt.plot, so plot x and y you give the x-axis label, you give the y-axis label and then you have some title to the plot and then you know uh, you want that plot to be displayed so plt.show so let's run this one now 
and here we have so look at this data is being plotted you see the data it is the squares are there so especially this is y is equal to x square curve so and then you have the x axis so x axis is named as x axis y axis y axis is named as y label is y axis and the plot title is or the graph title here is the simple plot so you if you change it here simple uh, 2d plot then it will be just change there simple 2d plot it will say simple 2d plot right so this is how we do the plotting now many a times this is the last slide now many a times we need to download the data from web so let's say you already have a huge data stored somewhere so then how we download the data using url you don't have to copy the data in your system you can directly download from the url so for that uh, this program is there so we will import a url lib dot request library and then we provide the url data set url here and then how you want to save the data that suitable file name we will be providing there and this is let's see how it works now so one of the very famous data set is the iris data set at the kaggle so here you see the www.kaggle.com and here is the iris cs csv file this we want to download and we want to download after download we want to give the file name as downloaded data.csv you can write whatever name you want to write and then we also have a message that how this downloaded whether the data is already downloaded and the file is already saved and how it is saved so let's run this code now and now it is yeah so this data is downloaded and downloaded data and saved the file as downloaded data dot csv it will be saved on your computer so these are the 10 code examples that we have seen in less than six seven minutes and uh, there will be the next video i will be giving you some homework which will be acting as a lab one for all my students and uh, please do practice please do practice these examples type as it is don't get fret out that you don't know python you don't know colab no you will know only when you start coding and it is extremely simple so that's all for now stay connected do subscribe my channel like this video and share this channel link with your friends and your uh, colleagues thanks a lot namaste have a good day.